Yeah, um, it might be chaotic. It will be even more chaotic because I hoped I could use my laptop for notes and the screen for, I mean, I could look at the screen and work there. But it's kind of delayed. So right now, one of the colleagues is trying to print out my notes and run back to me. Um, for the start, I will switch between the notes and the screen. So you will get a, bit, uh, a few spoilers, but I will also try to explain. Anyways, what I'm trying to do for you is something that I showed in five minutes at FOSGIS in Germany in March. I just copy pasted stuff in there and said, oh, now I do this, now I do that. So today we'll try to really live code step by step some completely useless, completely random art in QGIS. Um, yesterday you might have seen Uja Wald's talk, who also introduced ex expressions and had like QGIS icons looking at the mouse pointer or some lens through a layer and so on. Um, there's also a talk by Raymond, um, the second one after mine, which will also, I think, will be kind of follow along, so you can take your laptops out and do what he's doing. This session right now will be really chaotic. I might totally fail, but it will be fun for hopefully everyone, at least for me. Um, yeah, so let's see. Um, as a bit of a spoiler, maybe I can show beforehand the kind of stuff that I sometimes, sometimes do in QJS, so you kind of know what roughly to expect. And they will introduce how I'm doing it. So this is QJS. Oops, let me check. Oh, the menus are gone. Oh, that's a nice start. Anyways, that's the map canvas. I'm doing like random points somewhere, uh, gradient fills, animation over time, and so on. It's no geographical data. But it's, as you can see at the bottom, QGIS, and it's art, and it's beautiful, and it had me, made me happy when I made it. Could also do stuff like this, for example. These are just buffered points flowing around on some um, wave function, and there's shape burst fields and blending modes, and so on. It looks like diamonds, right? So I'm a very rich person right now. Let me see if I can get my menus back. That's not good. That's really not good. I see them in the back, but what is going on? Anyways, I have an open QGIS still, so it should be fine. Um, another one, maybe, just to inspire you even more. Right, I can also use the mouse cursor and have it influence the stuff that I'm doing on the canvas. And I think that's it for now. So I will gently start and the, I'm not sure if you're going to learn something, but the curve of complexity will be like uh, this. <laughs> and also the, the curve of my uh, nervousness and oh my God, something is not working. Um, yeah, so let's, let me ch quickly check in my notes what I, what, how we want to start. All right, that's not hard. And let me sit down so I can type relaxed. All right, so in QGIS, we have the map canvas. And yeah, wait, let, let me make a new project. I have a new project, I have a map canvas, and I can create a new temporary scratch layer, so no data behind it. Set it to polygon. And now I have an empty layer. If I switch this layer simplization to inverted polygons, QGIS thinks, oh, there's actually something I have to draw inside my canvas. And because there's no feature at all, it thinks everywhere is a feature and it has to draw something. And this is, I can take to now override with a geometry generator, right? I can tell QGIS, here's this, here's no feature, but you think there's a feature because it's inverted. And this feature you should now render not just as a polygon, but I will tell you what to do, what I really want you to draw. And I hope that at least some things, why can't I zoom in here? I can zoom in here. All right. This is the stuff that you want to see. Um, over here, I can now enter programming code expressions to tell QGIS what kind of geometry it should render here. I can say, for example, um, render the center point of my canvas. These are special um, functions or variables that QGIS provides. And as you can see, QGIS sees the canvas. It sees nothing. It knows it should invert everything. 
it sees the geometry generator and it sees the code that I tell it to render here. Right, so we can use that to do funky stuff. We can make, for example, a point that's somewhere, uh, let me check, that's randomized inside the map canvas. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Let me switch to this one so I get some completion. Uh, no, wait, what? Yes, okay, yeah. I hope the printing works, otherwise I will have to switch between my nodes a lot. I will explain what, is, what this does in a moment. But those of you who can read this kind of stuff might already notice my mistakes. Oh God, yeah, that's a live session. So why? That does not work yet, but let's see what I try to do. So I can get the map extent width and height. I can take the minimum and maximum value from that. And I can take these values and put them into random functions that then take the lower and higher. Oh, perfect. Yes, now we go. Oh, perfect. That's even better than expected. All right, now I can cheat and look at my notes. Ah, yes, of course, it's not the width and height, but it's actually the map extent, right? So I take the whole polygon, and this is the extent polygon. I can get the leftmost, the rightmost um, coordinate by x min by x max. I can get the top and bottommost coordinates by using y min and y max, and I can put these into random functions. Let's see what happens. I get a new point somewhere. And each time I move the, uh, the uh, view, QGIS knows I have to draw the, map, uh, draw, draw the map again, and it encounters this random function. And because random is random, every time you get a new coordinate for this point. Let's not just use one point, let's, let's, choose, let's use many. Um, Javal said array for each is one of his favorite functions. We can use kind of a for loop if we do that, let me switch to the bigger code editor. With array for each, I can give it some kind of a series, some kind of a number of things, for example, the number zero to 42, and have something inside the second parameter of this array for each function. So this function will run 43 times in this case. Let me make it 42, doesn't really matter, but might be nicer to understand and each time it will create a random point somewhere in the map, map extent. At the bottom you see the preview, maybe it's very small, but it says point, 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 and so on. And I can collect that into a multi-point. And get many points. If I move the um, map again, you see it moves. Right, we can also turn the canvas or the, uh, the layer into something that updates regularly at a certain time. So I could say, please update the map every uh, 20, 20th of a second. And you see each time QGIS renders the canvas in you, it encounters this function over here. The random um, function gives a different value each time. So yeah, it look, looks kind of funky. We can influence the random generator by giving it a seed. We can kind of manipulate the, the dice that QGIS is, is throwing. Um, so a seed means if I start, if I have a random function and I kind of initialize this random function with a seed and I call it again with the same one and again and again, it will create the same series of values if I um, uh, execute it again. So if I seed it with a one, for example, and I throw my dice and I get a five, four, two. And I do it again, initialize with a one, I get five, four, two again. It's still random, but it's based on the same um, initial value. So let's see. Let's use different values. Okay, now hmm, each point gets the same coordinate. 
and because we fixed the seed, it's the same each time the map is also updated. This array function gives me also a element variable. It gives me the element that's created or that, that's used in this series. So that in this case, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And I could also inject that into the function and say the seed is my current counter. So in this case, I have for the x values a different seed value for each point, but each time QGS renders, it's the same one, so it's static. And I could use the same for y, or maybe add one, and I get a nice distribution of points again. So who still understands everything? Yay! <laughs> Excellent. Righty, page one. Oh God, that's a lot of that I have to want to do. Okay, I have to, I have, oops, I have to hurry up and not throw my microphone away. Hoppala. So, everyone's awake now. Um, let's make it buffers. Um, let me see. Instead of, the, uh, insta uh, uh, instead of this point, I will make a buffer. For example, oops. I have to switch to polygon. I'm zoomed in pretty far, let me zoom out. Right, so I can make them big and small here. I can again make this randomized. Let's say between 0, 1, 1.4, don't start a backup please. And also add the seed again for the, uh, using the element. So now each point gets a different sized buffer, right? I use the, the element counter again, so 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and each time they get a random number between 0, 1 and 1.5, and this is used every time. Now let's actually use the time again for something. Let me name this distance, right? We can use the parameter names here so it's a bit more understandable. Let me just add some features so I can get a label to show. Doesn't really matter. Now I have a feature here. And let's say one or something. You see a one over here. Let me make it bigger. In QJS we can also take the time. We can get a counter of milliseconds from 1970 until now. So I could, since my canvas is updated every, every uh, 20th of a second, I could also introduce this time counter somehow into my calculation. So let's see what I can do here. I could, for example, use the modulo to just extract the millisecond part and divide it by 10 and now I get a number going from zero to 100 each second, right? So zero, 100, tick, tick, and so on. I could use that to influence the size of my buffer. So let's scale that. By, well, that's a bit big. But we can scale it. We can use the scale linear function to say scale this value over here, which might be between zero and 100 to a new range of one to, or of, yeah, let's say, I did it right down here, one to five, it doesn't really matter right now. I will change it in a moment anyways. So now in each um, second, the points are scaled up a bit. Wow, how did I do this at five minutes at first GIS? Yeah, I didn't type there. Anyways, we will uh, do some progress and we'll just copy in the rest in the, in the end. So, um, I could also use pi over here, right? Um, my idea is later to get some pulsing, pulsating effect to make these not plop up and be gone again, but to actually have some kind of a gentle motion of these circles. For that, I could use minus pi and pi as my 
values to end up. So this goes from minus 3.1 to plus 3.1. I can now put this into the sine function. And maybe let me show this in the label again because it might be more easy to oops, understand. Uh, yeah, where's the feature over here? Also ellipse, ellipse morning. Um, so this goes down from zero, one to one now, right? Putting pi into the sine function gives me a range of minus one to one, which is in a curve motion. And if I take that, right, minus one to one, scale that again. from minus one to one, and the values now should be zero to uh, four maybe. I get some pulsing of these circles. It's a bit much, let me make it smaller, 0 0.8. Isn't that cute? Like little, I don't know what they are. <laughs> All right, so five minutes left. I might do one or two minutes longer because you might not have any questions, I'm sure. Um, let me see. So what else did I do? Um, my end result, I wanted to make some kind of a, uh, I was kind of uh, influenced by Mario Land. There's a level with some uh, stars where you jump through and they, and the beat of the music flash, uh, flash around. So I wanted to have some stars in a way. So let me make these more star looking. Let's look at the whole expression again. So what did I do? I create many points, 42 points in here, somewhere on the extent. I buffer them and the buffer gets a distance that's scaled. Let me move this bit inside here maybe so it's easier to see. Another parameter of the buffer is the segments, how smooth the buffer should be. And if I set that to one, I get nice diamond shapes. So I need a number from someone, one to 10, who wants to say a number? Seven, all right, let's see what we get. So let's use a gradient film and let's use a color ramp. Let's use the seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, magma, oh, that's nice, great choice. So it looks a bit nicer already. Let me, let me make the background dark, maybe like this. And let's also randomize the gradient a bit. So let me take the second reference point of the gradient and let me check also random number between one and zero. So the start point or the end point of the gradient should be at the top or the bottom. And let me just use as seed the number of the point inside this polygon uh, multipoint object. So each one gets a different starting point. Ah, the choice is not perfect, but it looks okay. I can show my result in the end. So let's see what else do we need. Oh, wrong page. Yeah, that's nice, I want to show that. All right. Um, what I also added is a thing that runs around this thing at the parameter of the um, created symbol. So I add another function, another style. Sorry, not here, but here. And let me see geometry generator. Now I will just type a lot and explain later. Why should I type? Let me copy that. Uh, over here, oh, let's do it step by step. So I can use a um, line substring function going somewhere around my, oh God, all right. Live session mode. Let me switch to the final one and I will explain the rest that I did. Otherwise, this will be just be a mess. This is totally fine. So let's look at these. And I will do three minutes and have lesser Q&A if it's okay. Yeah, I will do three minutes. Yeah. All right, so this is more like it. This is fancy, right? Yay, okay. So what else did I do here? I added some interpolated line around these diamonds using a geometry generator that takes a substring of the line around this square. So using substring, you can extract a part of a line 
And here I also use the time again. I say the time in milliseconds goes up from one to thousand, but I scale it to the length of the perimeter around the square and then run around this, always going one unit further. So you get kind of a substring of this and there's a little worm running around these squares now. What else do we have? We have a star field in the background. Let me disable this. Let's just look at these. These are stars, again, I created with a similar um, random point generation. But here I also scale them and I use the modulo to have a number between, uh, a different number for each of these stars. So each one has its own pulsing effect, not in sync like the others. The music, right, these all pulsate in the same time. <clears throat> Using the modulo, I can get a different kind of starting point for this pulsating movement for each of these. And I also added a kind of flashing star field, might not be visible, oh, it's visible, okay, that's nice. Um, in this case, I also wanted to show that you can use um, kind of pre-calculation of, of variables before I had this array loop and each, each time inside I extracted the min, min and max values from the extent. Um, here I calculate them first and put them into a map, so kind of a uh, dictionary in this expression language and just use these so QGS doesn't have to calculate them each time. All right, if I put this all together, I get some nice little artsy scene and yeah, put some music under it. It's 120 BPM so you can jam around uh, to this kind of stuff um, and have lots of fun. Right, let me check because I totally failed with my time planning. If there's something still that I want to show you, but I don't think so. Um, in that case, I would say let's go into Q&A because you might have completely uh, interesting questions or might say, hey, go back to this. How did you do that, please? All right, thanks. <laughs> Oh, that's too slow. Thank you, Janus. Uh, is there any question? Yes, thanks. Anyone? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, have you actually used this for anything else than uh, as a hobby or for music? Uh, or For me, it's basically just having fun. Um, I love demo scene stuff, so it's kind of an art scene where people use constrained environments to create art, like very small programs with like one kilobytes of, of, of space and they program great effects. And I always thought, oh, these guys are so cool. And at some point I realized, hey, I can also use this constrained QGIS environment and do stupid stuff with that. And it makes it really easy to kind of get visualization going. For me, it's just sometimes at home, I think, oh God, all day I did QGIS stuff in professional setting. I need to do something else and still QGIS. And then, um, yeah, it might just end up being something like that. At work, we have kind of a bet going who gets the first client to integrate anything like that into a project. <laughs> so anything animated or following the mouse cursor or something, but no one has taken it yet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there already like a QGIS demo scene involving or can we follow along your art on Mastodon or something? Uh, yeah, I'm on Mastodon, a cartocalypse, like the apocalypse, but with cartography. Um, there are some other people who do stuff like that, right? Most people who work with expressions at some point do something creative. I think we could use the style hub to upload these because it's basically just an empty style for anything. Um, what's hard about it is I just start in any coordinate system in any extent and just do something that works for me in that area. So it might be harder to make it then work on other areas and other um, extents as well. But yeah, it would be fun if others uh, would like to join in. We could make an art pack for QGIS or something. It would be great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other else? Any question? Okay, then if there is no question, then thank you, Jonas, for the thank very you. interesting talk. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>